I've spent the last few months making a working, ruthlessly practical Fremen Thumper. I'm really happy with the results, but the video of its construction and testing isn't ready yet. But in the meantime, I thought I'd cover some random shop improvements I've been working on. The big one is replacing this chuck key for my three jaw. The crossbar has been falling out, and while I could just attach it more permanently, I had an idea for an improved version. See, the three jaw chuck is pretty cheap, and its action is very stiff, even immediately after cleaning it. I usually use both hands when adjusting it, which is a pain because then I don't have any hands left over for holding the part I'm trying to chuck. So I thought maybe adding a crank handle would make sense. To see if it worked at all, I attached a bit of all thread in place of the crossbar, and bent a handle in it to mock up the general idea. And it worked surprisingly well, certainly well enough to justify making it for real. But before starting that, I needed to get my drill bit situation under control. This meant working through the sharpening backlog. I'm getting better at using the Derek sharpener, but I still put it off far too long. With that done, where do the bits go? Well, the large ones go in this drawer, which lives in the outer shop, but that's silly. All the drilling tools live in the inner shop, as do the smaller drill bits. This was just a blind copy of how things were laid out in the old shop, which no longer makes any sense. So I moved it, along with the hole saws, into the inner shop. Much better. The first step of making the new chuck key was to cut the square drive business end. Yet another job for collet blocks. These are definitely something I'd encourage people to get, even if they don't have a mill. Being able to securely hold parts and index them in multiples of 60 and 90 degrees is really valuable, and collets can even hold threads without damaging them. Speaking of the mill, this dustpan lives next to it, precariously hanging off a screw head. I knock it off all the time, Blech. So I finally replace the screw with an eye bolt cut down into a hook. Nothing major, but sometimes fixing small annoyances is almost the most satisfying. After the square driver, the next most important part of a chuck key is the crossbar. This will need to be particularly well attached for this version, prevented not just from sliding side to side, but also not being able to rotate from the torque of the crank handle. I could have just welded it, sure, but where's the fun in that? The final device I was thinking of was going to be way too classy for a visible weld. A keyway was the only possible solution. I love cutting keyways almost as much as I love collet blocks. Next to the arbor press are these shelves holding some of my stock. It's not a great solution, but the cabinet came with the shop. The lower shelf broke a couple of months ago, spontaneously failing under the weight of the stock. Cheap press board, ugh. I cut a new one to size from higher quality plywood, and spent some time organizing the stock a bit. Much better. Eventually I'm going to consolidate all the different bits of storage into a single rack in the outer shop, where it really belongs but I'll probably keep putting that off until the space in the inner shop is needed for a new acquisition. Getting this under control was enough for today. Time to make a handle for the crank. After going through my options, trying to only use material I already had on hand, I decided to go with a 1-inch brass rod to match the central 1-inch steel shaft. Extravagant for a lathe tool? Yeah, possibly, but oh well. Making big finger grooves is just so much fun. The last big thing I wanted to do was rebuild my horizontal bandsaw nook. I use this tool all the time. Basically, every project starts here. It's lowered to put its vise at the level of the surrounding benches, meaning I never have to set up inflow and outflow stands. Overall, I'm quite happy with the setup, except for a few problems. It can't open fully in every position due to this wall stud behind it, something I didn't notice until after the original construction was done. And I have to reach quite a ways over it to get to the power switch. It's not a particularly scary tool, but I'd still rather not risk some part of my body or clothing getting caught up in it. And I'd also like an easier, more panic-proof way to shut it off, just in case. First step, moving the platform forward to give the saw more tilting room. Disassembly was a pain, which is why I'd been putting it off for so long. I had to replace the side rails on the platform with longer ones, so they'd reach back far enough to be screwed into the benches. Then it just had to be put back in place making sure it was at exactly the right height. Finally, I added a cheap master power switch I found online. I left the old switch alone so it can still be used as an auto-off switch when the cut is finished, though honestly the alignment drifts so quickly that it rarely works anyway. The new master switch has a big friendly stop paddle that would be easy to hit in an emergency. Hell, if things get really bad, I'd be pulled into it forcibly. Much better, I think. 
And after tracking down a correct socket cap screw and grinding it to just the exact right length, the cranking chuck key was also finished. It has a delightful heft and works pretty well. Best if the lathe is in the low gear so the chuck doesn't rotate too freely, but still workable even in the 400 to 700 RPM range I usually leave it in. And because the crossbar is the same length as before, it can still be used two-handed to really snug the chuck down on a part. It even hangs nicely on the existing chuck key holder. Not too bad, I think. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe to catch the upcoming video for the Fremen Thumper project.